Um, sorry, Tanvi. Sorry. Uh, I'm really sorry for the uh, issues. Okay. And Not a problem I, at all. Please take over. I have three internet providers, but still have the same issue here. Maybe because of the location where I'm sitting now. Um, okay. So I'll I'll continue now. Okay. So we are located in the northwest of England, close to Liverpool and Manchester cities. Uh, and we have three main campuses in Chester, Warrington, and Shrewsbury. Chester City is located 40 minutes uh, from Liverpool, 50 minutes from Manchester, two hours away from London by direct train. Warrington is 25 minutes from Manchester. In Chester City, we are located at four different locations. Uh, you can see our campus names, Parkgate Road, Kingsway, Riverside, Queen's Park. These four campuses are in Chester City, where Parkgate Road is our main campus uh, where, and where we provide all facilities to international students. We have excellent facilities in our Parkgate Road campus and also Warrington campus. Uh, in the campus, students will find uh, lecture halls, library, uh, language laboratories, um, in English language laboratories, uh, clinical laboratories. In the in in, li in our library has extensive collection of books, e-books, journals, uh, 24 by 7 computer lab computer labs, and also two floor study spaces. We also provide student support center, career and employability center, accommodation in both Parkett Road campus and Warrington campus, uh, banking facilities, cafeteria, sports facilities. So, what whichever facilities students. Uh, uh, required uh, for during their study and stay. We have those facilities in the campus, okay? And our Parkgate Road is home to uh, courses like medical science and clinical sciences. Uh, and also, Queen's Park is the business school where we run only business and management courses, which is also in Chester City. Queen's Park is just 10 minutes walkable distance from the main, uh, main campus, Parkgate Road. Our business school uh, is highly ranked. Uh, in recently, uh, it has uh, it has ranked uh, one of the best business schools in the north of UK by Educate North, and also nominated for the best business school award across UK by Times Higher Education. Warrington campus uh, is in Warrington City, uh, and it is 25 minutes from Manchester. Uh, Warrington is home to uh, media and arts and a few management related courses. Uh, related courses. Thornton Science Park is a separate campus for science and engineering courses. All uh, engineering and uh, computer science uh, related courses are run at our Thornton Science uh, Park. Riverside is home to healthcare courses like nursing and the public health. We offer more than uh, 350 courses um, at different levels, uh, including foundation, undergraduate, postgraduate, uh, PhD, sorry, research. In research, we offer MRES, Master's by Research, MPhil, and PhD. Um, we also offer work-based learning. These are undergraduate courses, okay? So what happens in, more, all, all our undergraduate courses are work-based learning, okay? So in the second year, uh, there is a module called Enhancing Employability Through Work-Based Learning. So in some courses, um, this is a compulsory module and some, this is an optional module. So when students take this module, they will be placed in a company for maximum 150 hours. So whatever skills they gain in the first year and second year study, they apply at the work. So that they will be able to gain some real-time work experience while doing their course. And we offer various subject areas. You can see on the screen, we offer business management, arts and design, computing and information systems, biomedical and uh, biological sciences. We offer education, sports sciences, uh, engineering, and uh, we have very good medical science, uh, medical courses also at the postgraduate level. If you look at the entry criteria uh, uh, for foundation, in foundation, we offer uh, international foundation program and we also offer a foundation uh, foundation program included in, included in a bachelor degree, okay? 
uh, students who have scored above 55 uh, to 64% in 12 standard state boards or 55 to 59 overall in 12 standard central boards are eligible to uh, join a foundation course. Based on their academic English skills, we decide whether they uh, we decide whether they are eligible for a foundation program uh, or a bachelor degree, including a foundation year. Students who are offered international foundation program, okay, uh, they would need a compulsory uh, score IELTS score of five bands overall with no less than four point five. And for for the international foundation program, we accept only IELTS academic for UKVI. We do not we do not accept IELTS uh, academic. Undergraduate, uh, we. Oh, we accept all state boards, 12 standard, and also central boards. We require minimum 65% overall in 12 standard uh, state boards and 60% overall in 12 standard central boards. Okay, and um, for postgraduate courses, we accept both three-year and four-year bachelor degree. Uh, we require minimum 55% overall in a three-year bachelor degree or 50% overall in a four-year bachelor degree. For the majority of undergraduate and postgraduate courses, we do not uh, require IELTS or any other English language test. If students scored above 70% in 12th standard state board English or 65% uh, in 12th standard central board English. So students who have these uh, scores uh, in 12th standard English, they can directly join uh, postgraduate course or undergraduate course without taking ILTS, TOEFL, or PT exams. Uh, next one, uh, coming to the English language requirements, okay, the first one is a direct entry, like students who have already taken uh, ILTS, TOEFL, PT, okay, uh, for, for ILTS, we require minimum six bands overall uh, and with no less than 5.5 for UG courses. 6.5 overall with no less than 5.5 for PG courses, okay? And students who have already taken uh, IELTS exam but uh, have scored below uh, required uh, bands, like in, for example, uh, for undergraduate courses, if students uh, score 5.5 uh, overall with no less than five in each band, so they cannot uh, join directly uh, jo because because they scored below required ILTS, right? So what we can do, we offer them pre-sessional English. Uh, we, we offer five weeks, sorry, four, four weeks, eight weeks, and 12 weeks pre-sessional English. You can see required ILTS scores um, on the screen for these pre-sessional English courses. And remember, for pre-sessional English courses, we accept only ILTS academic for UKVI. We do not accept ILTS academic. And we now uh, accept a Duolingo test for pre-sessional English courses. We do not accept Duolingo test uh, for undergraduate and postgraduate courses, but only for pre-sessional English courses. And other option is like students who do not wish to take any of these uh, exa uh, exams like ILTS, TOEFL, PTE, and students who uh, scored below required 12th standard English, if they, if they want, they can take the university English language test. We offer a uh, university English language test uh, to our students, uh, offer holders. Um, once they receive the offer letter, they can request the university, university to schedule uh, the test for them. So students can take the university English language test online or uh, on, over Skype, okay, which is free of cost. And now once students clear the test, they can join the course directly without taking any other exams. Tuition fee uh, for pre uh, for foundation courses, uh, the fee is nine thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. Okay, and students who join a bachelor degree, including a foundation year, uh, here the duration will is four years because one year first year is the foundation, and second, third, and fourth year are bachelor undergraduate studies. Okay. So for the first year, they pay only pay foundation year foundation year fee, which is nine thousand two hundred fifty pounds. But for second, third, and fourth year, they pay undergraduate fee. Uh, for undergraduate, uh, the fee is twelve thousand four fifty pounds. 
we give maximum 2000 pounds scholarship that includes 1000 pounds guaranteed international scholarship for every applicant and 1000 pounds merit scholarship for the merit scholarship we require minimum 70% overall in 12 standard state boards or 65% overall in 12 standard central boards we also offer uh, undergraduate pre registered nursing pathways the fee is 9250 pounds plus 3 thousand placement fee per annum and no scholarship uh, for nursing courses nursing programs postgraduate fee is 12450 pounds same as undergraduate uh, fee but we offer 3000 pounds scholarship for postgraduate courses that includes 2000 pounds international scholarship which is a guaranteed uh, scholarship for every applicant every successful applicant okay and 1000 merit scholarship uh, for the merit scholarship we students need at least 60% overall in a three year bachelor degree or 55% overall in a four year bachelor degree. Okay. We, uh, our MBA, uh, generally, our MBA requires at least two years of managerial work experience. But at the same time, we also accept students with good academic record, record students who have scored above 60% in a bachelor degree, they can also apply for the MBA without work experience, okay? MBA fee is 12,700 pounds uh, for the course. Remember, all our postgraduate courses are one year, except uh, a few courses uh, like physician associate or MSc nursing, okay? And uh, for the MBA, MBA, we give maximum 3,000 pounds scholarship that includes 2,000 pounds guaranteed international scholarship and 1,000 pounds merit scholarship. And the criteria is same as uh, other postgraduate courses, 60% overall in a three-year bachelor degree or 55% overall in a four-year bachelor degree. Doctor of Medicine, uh, this course has been suspended for the recruitment, so it is not available in this academic year. In research, we uh, the, the, there are two types of research programs. One is classroom-based, uh, another one is laboratory-based. Uh, classroom-based research courses are like business and management. So the fee is 13,031 pounds. And laborat for laboratory-based research courses, the fee is 16,786 pounds. And we give maximum 1,000 pounds scholarship for PhD courses. Remember, PhDs are self-funded, so students should be able to fund themselves to support their education and living expenses during their research. MSc Physician Associate, like I said, this is a two-year course, uh, course uh, and the fee is 18,000 pounds per annum, no scholarships. MSc Wildlife Conservation, the fee is 12,450 pounds plus 2,000 pounds compulsory field trip. Uh, we offer 3,000 pounds scholarship uh, on this course that includes 2000 pounds international scholarship and 1000 merit scholarship ma social work and art therapy these are two year courses uh, the fee is 15000 pounds for two years and we offer 3000 pounds maximum 3000 pounds scholarship on these courses so students who get 3000 pounds scholarship they pay only 12000 pounds for two years all four courses, MSc Physician Associate, MSc Wildlife Conservation, MS Social Work, MA Art Therapy, have a compulsory ILTS requirement. Physician Associate requires seven bands overall, and other three require other three courses require 6.5 overall with no less than 5.5. And we also offer MSc uh, pre-registered nursing courses. MSc nursing course is not for registered nurses, okay? So we offer MSc nursing course to students who have completed uh, a bachelor degree in healthcare uh, or healthcare, uh, healthcare related courses, not nursing. So MSc nursing is strictly for uh, non-registered nurses or uh, students who are in uh, healthcare profession. Uh, we offer excellent facilities to international students, okay? You can see uh, some of our facilities. You can see library, laboratories, lecture halls, uh, studio rooms, okay, cafeteria. The main facility is like, uh, you know, whenever I meet students and meet, uh, parents, uh, most of them, they ask about placement assistance, okay? 
So this is a common question whenever I meet students and parents. So we have uh, a five-star rated career and employability center in the campus, okay? Uh, you can call it a placement center also. Uh, they assist uh, students, they assist and guide students for placements, both part-time and full-time vacancies. So as you know, students can do 20 hours per week part-time job and full-time in holidays, okay? So students can, once they go there, they can search for a job in the campus or outside the campus, but in the campus, they will find very limited opportunities. We have a scheme called UniJob, which is run by our Career and Employability Center. So what they do, they advertise paid vacancies to students in the campus. So students who wish to get a part-time job in the campus, they can apply for a uni job, attend face-to-face -face interview. If they are selected, they will get a part-time job within the campus. And there are a, uh, a few points which uh, students need to remember. When they search for a part-time job, they should not expect a professional job because professional jobs require a full-time work which they cannot as an international student okay they can only work 20 hours per week and another important thing is they should not expect job uh, immediately uh, after going there okay it takes some time okay students need to give some time to get a part-time job because once they go there uh, they will uh, of course they have to search for a part-time job where our career and employability center can assist them okay and if not the campus, there are plenty of options available outside the campus. So students really need to go to organizations, companies, uh, which offer part-time jobs, okay, inquire them about vacancies, and students need to build network, uh, network and contacts with students who are already doing part-time jobs. So a lot of students in the UK get part-time jobs through references, okay? Apart from these, the other way to search for a part-time job is our Career Hub portal, uh, which is also run by our Career and Employability Center. Through Career Hub portal, students can search for different types of work, including student vacancies, these are part-time jobs, uh, graduate vacancies, these are full-time jobs after study, student internships during the course time. So once they log in Career Hub portal, they can see a lot of vacancies uh, in the hub, in the, in the portal. So students can go or go through the vacancies and can apply uh, jobs which are suitable to their profile, okay? So our career center, they assist and guide students in uh, their job search, and they also guide, uh, assist students with job applications, including CV writing, cover letters. They train students for job interviews. And uh, our career center, they work closely with more than 90 companies in the UK for various uh, reasons, including recruitment and also curriculum development. So when our placement center receives vacancy details from these companies, they put it uh, in, in the career hub portal for students, okay? So students can apply to those jobs, okay? Apart from that, uh, they also conduct a lot of training sessions for students to enhance their employability skills, okay? So because of this support, what our placement center provides to students, we are able to achieve 95.6% graduate employability rate every year, okay? The, and because of this support, uh, from our, because of the support what our career center provides, uh, we have achieved a five-star rating, okay, across the UK. So students who want to, who, who look for a part-time job or full-time job uh, opportunities, I would say career center would be the best uh, best option, best resource available to them in the campus, okay? So they get complete guidance, okay? And coming to the post-study option, okay? And the UK government has confirmed again, okay? That they are going ahead with the graduate immigration route. So they will officially announce in summer 2021, which is July and August 2021. So students who, have a valid visa at the time of announcement, they will be eligible to apply for the work permit, okay? Without any conditions, okay? So once they complete uh, undergraduate or postgraduate studies, students will apply. Uh, students just need to make an application form, pay the application fee and health surcharge, so they will get two years extension. 
And during the two years, they can work full time. And at the same time, they can look for a professional job. Any student who want to extend further, even after postgraduate extension, that will, uh, will depend on what they do during the post-study extension, okay? See, after two years PSW, post-study work visa, they can only apply for tier two skilled work visa. So for that, they need to have a professional job and uh, should, uh, there is a salary criteria also to apply for tier two work, skilled work visa. So students who end up working at small, small places like restaurants, supermarkets, they will not be able to extend further because these are not skilled jobs. These are unskilled, low skilled jobs. Okay, so they cannot be able to apply for tier two work visa. Okay, and other important facility is uh, the accommodation. As I said earlier, we provide accommodation in our Parkgate Road campus, Chester and Warrington campus. So students have two options. They can stay in the university campus or they can stay outside the university in a private accommodation. I normally uh, suggest students to take a standard accommodation, mainly uh, students who are joining foundation and a bachelor degree first year, okay? See, students who join, who are joining foundation and bachelor degree first year, they, I think they are not matured enough to stay on their own uh, outside the campus. So if they stay at least a year in the university campus, okay, so they will know uh, uh, the place very well and uh, up from second year onwards, they can stay on their own outside the uh, university campus. So students who want to apply for the university accommodation, they must apply before the deadline for September intake, okay? So we provide a guaranteed accommodation for international students who apply for the accommodation before the deadline for September intake, okay? We offer uh, different types of accommodation, including standard accommodation, which are econo more economical than studio apartments, okay? So in stand standard accommodations are mostly shared accommodation. Students will stay in a house with other three international students where they share a kitchen and living area. Uh, and But each student will have their own study bedroom. And this uh, standard accommodation will cost uh, 90 to 110 pounds per week, excluding food. And that, in that is including utility bills like electricity, gas, and internet, okay? If not the university accommodation, students can stay outside the campus. If they decide to stay outside the campus, it is always better to stay in a group, okay? So if, if, there, are, if there is a group of four or five students, they all can take a house outside the campus on sharing basis. When they stay in a private accommodation on sharing basis, it will be more cheaper than staying in the university accommodation, okay? So students can decide, uh, where they would want to stay, whether it, in, it is in, in the campus or outside of the campus. And, but students who decide to stay outside the campus, there is a condition. They will, they need to find, uh, they need to stay within one hour radius to the campus, okay? So students, I mean, if they want to, uh, if they have any friends in London, Birmingham, or in any other uh, far away cities, okay, they cannot stay uh, in London and commute daily to the Chester. It is not possible, okay? So students can at least stay in Liverpool and Manchester because these are within one hour uh, distance from, the, from Chester and Warrington cities. So students can stay in Liverpool and Manchester, but not places like, you know, Cardiff or Birmingham or uh, London, okay? And, Apart from these, we also provide excellent sports facilities, okay? We have a football, hockey, cricket, indoor games, gym, swimming pool, so students can still uh, continue their sports activity while studying in the campus. And there's an excellent student life, okay? Uh, we have a, a good student union. They organize social and cultural events, and students who would wish to explore UK who would like to go to different places in the UK. There are excursions, okay, so they can take part. And uh, th there are more than 100 clubs and societies in the campus, so students can uh, enroll for these societies. I mean, the societies like dance societies, debate societies, 
uh, and in chinese uh, like country wise societies there is an indian indian society there is a chinese society so student can participate in these societies also and coming okay so a lot of students i mean they would want to know what are the benefits of coming to the university okay see in the uk there are more than 135 plus universities are there so they have a lot of options to choose right so obviously and i i'm aware students do not apply to only one university they apply to different different universities at the same time and at the end they will choose a university which fits in which fits best into their requirements okay so i'll give you five main advantages of coming to the university one is meet students from all over the world this is same with a lot of universities like you know uh, once you go there you will meet students from different countries as i said earlier we have students from more than 100 countries so students will get an opportunity to study along with other international students and they gain some global exposure another important thing is true british experience this is why a lot of students travel to abroad okay uh, especially uk to gain some uh, local experience okay places if any student wants to gain good british exposure i would say chester and warrington are ideal places okay because these are traditional british cities where 96 percent of the population are traditional or british okay so where in the students where wherever they go or uh, in the city or city center shopping mall or restaurants or in the campus library lecture halls laboratories they will be surrounded uh, with um, so many britishers so they'll be able to they will speak to uh, britishers and they gain you know good british exposure also Students will not get the same experience if they go to other cities like London, Liverpool, and Manchester. These are cosmopolitan cities where they see different people from different backgrounds. Okay, so students who want to gain good British exposure and students who want to enhance their English language skills, okay, I would say choose a choose a location where you, uh, this you see a lot of Britishers. Okay. And another one is um, important advantage is competitive tuition fees. If you look at our postgraduate fee, uh, 12,450 pounds, okay, for MSc and MEA courses, and we offer 3,000 pounds, maximum 3,000 pounds scholarship. So after 3,000 pounds, the total fee is only 9,450 pounds, which is approximately 8.7 lakhs in our currency, okay, which is affordable and competitive compared to any other university in the uk not only that affordable cost of saving okay uh, i i told you uh, when we were discussing the accommodation students who want who who wish to stay in a private accommodation on sharing basis they spend very less money okay i give you i'll give you my example uh, i'm also a graduate of this university studied mba from 2013 to 2015 so i stayed in a private accommodation on sharing basis with my uh, friends okay we used to spend 150 pounds per month on rent 50 pounds for utilities uh, utility bills that includes electricity gas and internet and only 50 to 75 pounds on food we used to cook on our own right so if if students go to tesco they can buy you know uh, all all they can buy clothes there they can buy groceries uh, they can buy utensils and even indian ready-made food is also available okay so within within a 15 pounds okay students can buy groceries for a week so the food cost will not be more than 50 to 75 pounds and altogether it was only uh, i spent only you know 300 pounds maximum per month so which is very low compared to any other university city in the uk because of affordable tuition fee and uh, uh, low living cost, the University of Chester has rated as one of the uh, most affordable universities for international students in the UK. And another advantage is we arrange free English language classes for international students to enhance their English. Okay, and uh, I, uh, as I said earlier, we have a five-star rated career and employability center 
because of their support we are we achieve 94.6% graduate employability every year okay another important thing is when students go to a new location it is all it is very important to know the city first the the place first okay chester is one of the famous historical places in europe with a history of more than 2000 years okay so it was a roman city and there are many places uh, to visit in chester city uh, including chester wall east gate clock which is the second most visited clock after the big ben in london okay and there is a chester cathedral race course roman amphitheater and chester zoo which is the second largest zoo in the uk so every year more than 6 million tourists come to see these places not only that the city also ranked uh, is also ranked uh, fifth prettiest city in europe and uh, best place to live in the uk uh, sixth uh, fifth uh, sorry fifth happiest place to uh, live in the uk and fifth best city in the uk very important safest city in the northwest region this is an important uh, information for all international students safety wise there are no issues uh, i mean during my stay during my days in racism it is a very safe and friendly location for international students even weather wise also it is very it is very friendly uh, atmosphere because the city is surrounded by uh, hills right so there won't be any extreme you know winter conditions or extreme summer conditions okay so it's a very friendly weather and very friendly people and very safe place for international students coming to the application process we um, accept applications online we do not accept applications by email so uh, students can submit uh, applications we give, uh, we provide a link for students to submit applications or then we and team can submit uh, applications on behalf of students okay once they collect all supporting documents okay uh, for the application we need uh, students mark sheets okay uh, 10th 12th bachelor degrees if they are applying for a postgraduate course um and uh, two letter of recommendation and uh, one statement of purpose which is compulsory okay and passport copy students who have already taken ilds toefl pt uh, they have to submit uh, they must submit a score scorecard okay and students who have gaps like more i mean students if they have 10 years gap also still they can submit but important thing is they need to explain what they were doing during the gap if students who are working or who have worked they must submit uh, employment evidence okay or if they have if they have done some courses they need to submit course completion certificates okay and another a justification is compulsory why they are returning to a full-time study after two three year two three four years of work okay so justification is compulsory in the statement of purpose, okay? For students who have a gap, uh, students who have a study gap, okay? And once we receive the offer, uh, currently applications are taking uh, minimum two weeks time to process because of high volume of applications we receive on day-to-day -day basis. And also, as you know, because of this uh, situation, we all are working remotely. So there 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 is a lot of coordination required before the issue of letters that is why it is taking at least two weeks time to process each application once students receive the offer uh Tanvi and team it is your responsibility to explain and tell students to go through the terms and conditions of the offer okay uh, mainly tuition fee payment policies and refund policies okay and also explain and also explain the academic conditions okay which are mentioned in the offer letter right so students who do not have the english language condition or the course competition conditions they can go ahead pay the initial deposit okay so students will pay minimum three thousand pounds initial deposit once they accept the offer after the payment uh, there will be a credibility interview for uh, for student for students from a few states okay so we have identified some 
troubled states to be honest based on our previous uh, experience with students okay uh, like uh st states like punjab haryana uh, telangana andhra pradesh so students from these states would need to attend a credibility interview after initial deposit okay so why we conduct this credibility interview one of course to check students intentions whether they, they are genuine intent students uh coming to study in the uk or they are coming there for a different reasons okay um and also it will prepare them for the visa interview at the embassy okay when they go to a local vfs visa office uh, application center vats okay once they submit their visa application there will be a skype interview okay so they will speak to a person uh, a visa officer actually based in the uk right so our credibility interview will provide confidence and will uh, will train them for that uh, visa interview at the visa application center once they clear the credibility interview students who are not from these states once it, once they pay the deposit they can immediately start the cas process um, that includes uh, submitting the cas request form genuine intention to study form and financial evidence so students will submit a copy of financial evidence to the university before uh, they receiving the cas letter once they once once they receive the cas letter they can apply for the visa and another important thing is what is the present situation okay uh, where the university stands in this uh, present situation whether uh, the university is going to start september intake or if uh, or is, are there any changes in september intake at the moment we are processing the september intake as normal okay so our stand is that uh, once students travel to the uk okay uh, after travel restrictions are over first few months they will uh, they will attend uh, lectures to learn the learning okay uh, that includes uh, uh, i mean uh, the environment is safe for international students to attend students to attend a uh, face to face face classes then uh, we will resume uh, uh, face to face lectures okay another scenario if students cannot travel because of the covid situation or because of uh, travel restrictions in their home country as you know the uk has already announced that they will uh, welcome uh, international travelers but students who travel to the uk they might have to go for a uh, Uh, 14 days quarantine okay so that is why students must have a confirmed accommodation before they travel to the uk whether it is in the university or outside the university so they must travel with a confirmed accommodation okay so in case students who cannot travel we will uh, conduct classes online so students can attend classes from india online once the situation gets better once the tra uh, travel restrictions are over they can immediately apply for the visa and travel to the uk so this is the our stand so do not think that okay there won't be any september intake or there won't be any admission process because of the situation the admission process is going on as normal so students can submit applications and can uh, proceed uh, further to complete the process okay and this is the place where students graduate okay every year we conduct our graduate graduation ceremony uh, in the chester cathedral uh, i think i'm done with the presentation so now i'm ready to take questions uh, both from students and tanvi from your team as well okay yes uh, kiran i would request you if you can turn your webcam on for the q and a round if it's a possibility okay uh, just a second let me stop the uh screen share okay okay um um just a second okay yeah 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 please take your time so hi kiran Uh, the presentation was really very informative 
and you though talked mm-hmm. about the covid 19 you though talked about the covid 19 situation as well my only question is that uh, by the time in fact the students really want to know by the time they are having their online classes how are you people actually managing the different time zones and how many times in a week are you guys having classes and how are the indian students because indian time zone varies a lot from the uk time zone so how are you guys managing the time zones so that all the international students can also have their classes very smoothly see i mean see the online learning gives flexibility flexibility to students right so whenever they want to attend lectures they attend because these are uh, online lectures right these are available on their students moodle only so we'll give a platform to students so they can attend classes whenever they want okay so they have a time flexibility and they can attend uh, classes and of course uh, if there are any assessment but students will have to submit uh, assessments uh, uh, before the deadline so that is which is very compulsory and we um, so before they start the course in i mean if they are going for online before they start the course uh, our academic team will get in touch with the student okay and they will try to give some training how they can uh, use the portal or moodle okay to attend classes so so there will be sufficient training for students to attend classes online thank you kiran so we have an attendee on facebook as well there are a lot of questions on facebook so so he wants to really ask one question which is that uh, if he doesn't have a study permit would he be allowed for online classes on the basis of his offer letter and on the basis of the fact that he has paid the fees yes and if in future so, he gets a rejection yeah please tell me yeah so in to attend online classes they don't need to have any visa okay so once they pay the deposit okay uh and uh, once their admission is confirmed okay once they attend the, once they clear the credible team for you uh, uh and i mean it's not that all students will attend the credible team really only from those four five couple states okay so once they complete the process yes they will attend online classes without applying for visa but whenever the situation gets better so students will have to apply for the visa immediately and travel to the uk and what and is the uh, follow up question the, yeah the follow up question was that if the visa gets rejected like mm-hmm. uh if the visa after when you are done with the online classes and your visa gets rejected so does the university refund the entire tuition fees or what is the scenario then see depending on the visa refusal okay uh if uh if the i mean if the visa refusal is based on the documents students submitted or information student provided then probably uh we may not uh, refund the tuition fee because the mistake wa- uh, was done by the student right but in case if we see there is no mistake or if it is a general reason then yes our management team will take a decision on the refund true so uh kiran like uh, we have always heard about statement of purpose and a lot mm-hmm. of students have a query that is it exactly like what should be the pointers that they should keep in their mind while they are writing an sop for your university particularly yeah it is about uh, their previous academic uh, and also experience if they have and another important information including uh, why they want to study in the uk compared to other countries or why i mean why the course okay and what are the learning out- outcome from the course and what are their career plans and how these codes would support them in their career uh, aspirations okay so it should be at least 750 words okay but it is a very important uh, document okay because uh, most uh, most of the students you know they take uh, they do not prepare good sops and and uh, to be honest it, the sop decides student selection okay apart from their academic scores sop is very important very true so then we have rakhi who has asked us this question i want to pursue my geography in masters is that course available or something which is relevant to this particular course do we have sorry, to appeal uh, so, for sorry, the tell me. entrance sorry tell me uh, where is that location because i can see uh, what's the student name uh, rakhi 
Okay. Uh, is there any MBA program available? I don't know. Rakhi, yeah, she has asked us about. Oh yeah, I want to pursue my yeah. geography master's course. I don't think we offer MSc geography. No, we we don't offer this course. Yeah. Any course relevant to that that she might pursue? There is any course. Uh, relevant to that geography to that? is something like you know landscapes. We have a course related to landscapes. Okay, uh, and also uh, some courses in archaeology also. All right. So at the postgraduate level, so they can apply for these courses. So uh, when we talk about all the international students, the biggest dilemma right now is that is it the right time to apply, or should we yes, hold on the right till time. the next intake? No, so it is the right time to apply. See what that. happens if they wait till let's say July or August. See normally July and June, July and August are crucial months for every for all universities, right? so there will be a lot of activities going on including interviews admissions uh, cash processing so if students decide to apply in july it it takes a lot of time for them to you know uh, receive offer letters and to start a uh, next process okay so it's better they apply now and keep the offer letter ready once they decide to process further yes they can pay the initial deposit because see for the application and the offer letters they don't need to pay any fees there is no application fee they submit the application form and they receive the offer letter once they decide yes uh, they can uh, they can proceed further if not if they want to defer uh, if the course is available in january they can defer to january or next september 2021 Okay, then we have Prathmesh. She has asked us question regarding MBA program. So, is there an MBA program available, and what would be the eligibility criteria? What word does he need to have to apply? Okay, so oh sorry, um, sorry, Tanvi. Can we go one by one question because there are a lot of because after Raki there is one question uh, from Nirav. Is there PG medical course for Indian MBBS doctors? So this is what I was looking for actually uh, questions. Okay. Yes, we have for postgraduate medicine courses. Okay, uh, we we have MSc cardiovascular diseases, MSc oncology, MSc respiratory medicine, MSc hematology, diabetes, orthopedics, so infection and immunity. So we have these uh, medicine related courses at the postgraduate level, and these are one year non clinical medicine courses. Okay, so students who have completed mbbs degree in india or abroad like countries like china russia uh, tajikistan georgia they can also apply for these courses okay i tell you see these are non clinical courses and once they complete the course they will not be able to register with uh, uh, gmc there in the uk because these are non clinical courses right and so what what options are there after the course anyway they will get 2 years work visa after studies okay and if any student wants to practice in the uk as a doctor they would first need to clear plab exam which is a licensing exam okay like in india we have mci exam in the uk they have plab so plab has two exams one and two plab one for plab one students can take the exam uh, anywhere in any, any country because it's an online exam but for the plab two students will travel to manchester or will travel to uk to attend the test so students who are already there uh, already studying M msc medicine courses it will be easy for them to prepare and give plab to test there itself so once they clear uh, the plab to test hello kiran your voice is cracking a bit uh, okay just me? a second just a second yeah yeah i can hear you can you hear me Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Please continue. Yeah. So students who are already there uh, in the UK, and it will be easy for them to prepare and uh, give uh, the PLAB exam. So once they clear the PLAB exam, they can able to practice in the UK. So we have very good. Uh, and another important thing is the requirements are really simple for MSc uh, medicine courses. which we require minimum 50% overall in their mbbs degree if they have studied in india but uh, if they 
have completed in other countries like Russia, China, or um, Georgia. So, uh, I mean, there is a high requirement, like, you know, we need 70% in their bachelor degree, okay? And students who have, students who scored above 70% in 12th English, they don't need to appear for any English language test for MSc medicine courses. Okay, uh, there is a course, is there a PG course of physiotherapy and MBBS courses? Unfortunately, we do not offer MBBS course, but uh, we also, we, uh, we do not have a direct physio physiotherapy course. For physiotherapists, we offer cardiovascular health and risk, uh, rehabilitation, MSc orthopedics, and also uh, as some sports related courses like sports biomechanics, sports, medicine, sports performance analysis. So you can apply to any of these courses, uh, Ms. Anita. Uh, there's a question from KCP Shetty. I'm an LLB of 1986, completed batch, okay, practicing advocate for five years. Want to study LLM in IPR. Uh, we offer only um, uh, one course, LLM, which is contemporary legal studies, okay? So if that uh, interests you, you can submit the application for LLM, okay? Uh, is level of MED courses, ma master's in education? Yes, we have uh, MA education in society and there are uh, a good number of postgraduate certificate in education. So please go to our university uh, postgraduate website there you find a lot of courses in education. So what is the fee for MPhil? Depends, uh, if you are going for a classroom based, uh, the fee is 13,031 pounds. And if it is a laboratory based, it, the fee is 16,786 pounds. Uh, then there is a question from Rocky. Uh, I want to pursue my geography masters. Is this available? No. Uh, we do not have a geography course, but there are uh, there's a course related to landscapes and also a few archaeology related courses. So you can apply to any of these courses. Masters, M, uh, M, Masters in physiotherapy is not available, but we can give some alternate options. One is MSc cardiovascular uh, health and rehabilitation, uh, MSc orthopedics, and also MSc sports biomechanics, sports performance analysis, and sports medicine. What do you think after COVID, is, is, COVID is, it, is it easy to get visa? Yes, you will get the visa if you have a right document and right intention to, start, to travel to the UK. Yes, it, it depends. The visa will depend on, your, uh, on the information you provide, on the documents you provide and your intentions to study. Uh, I mean, if you have genuine intention to study and if you have uh, uh, applied to a right course based on your profile, yes, you will uh, get the a visa. Oh, which are PG courses good for me? And Okay, uh, I think Kalyan, I just need more clarity on your question. So what co what kind of program you are looking for? And it would be fruitful after PG in England and will got pleased. So yeah, as I said early in my presentation, after studies, you will be eligible to apply for two years post-study extension, right? So without having a job offer, you can get a work permit for two years post-study work visa. So you can search for a professional job during the post-study extension. After completing MBA, the university provide placements or we should find by ourselves. Uh, af after your studies, once you get a uh, two years post-study extension, yes, uh, you will get, uh, our career and employability center will guide you uh, for in your job search, okay? And you can use our career hub portal to search for jobs, even including graduate vacancies after studies also. So to apply for postgraduate extent, study extension, you don't need to have a job offer. So you can, you just need to make the application form. Uh, MCA course in our university and fee structure for MSc course. 
for MSc, the fee is twelve thousand four fifty pounds. We offer maximum three thousand pounds scholarship. That includes two thousand pounds guaranteed international scholarship for uh, every applicant, and thousand uh, pounds merit scholarship for students who have scored above sixty percent overall in a three-year bachelor degree or fifty-five percent overall in a four-year bachelor degree. So. we okay there is a question we get visa for one year or two years okay if you are applying for a post graduate course you will get the visa for the course duration 12 months plus 4 months so total 16 months if you are applying if you are applying for a ug uh duration 3 years plus 4 months extra visa so total uh around 40 months visa can you give us indian student details regards loans and the tenure Regards loan and tenure, um, I don't. I'm not. I'm. I don't under. I'm not understanding these questions. Whether they want to apply for any loans. Uh, uh, that question is majorly about the loan. That uh, how soon can they learn about the loan? So, guys, that bit is the question. As soon as as yeah. soon as they receive the offer, they can approach any nationalized bank in India for an uh, education loan. Okay. depending on their requirements uh, i mean ob- uh, the banks would give the information in ca- if they are going for a loan uh, beyond 7 6 6 or 7 lakhs so probably students might uh, have to mortgage some properties uh, as part of the loan process okay so yes they can apply for 15 lakhs 16 lakhs okay depending on their requirements sure uh, uh, it- yeah there is is it is it true that companies based in the uk would prefer uh, native citizens over foreign students who have pursued studies in the uk no when when you when you once once you get post study extension you can apply to any companies okay uh because uh, normally um, you know when when companies in the uk they hire uh, employees okay they will have to do a residence labor market test but when if when if they are taking an international students they don't need to do a residence labor market test so without uh, any requirements they can hire uh, international students if they are suitable uh, to that job okay so there is no uh, i mean bias uh, this kind of bias in the uk so they can they hire companies hire talented international students uh, on to professional jobs okay does the university offer a masters course in sorry i missed that question what is that university offers course in ux ui or interaction design okay um i'm really not sure about those two uh, ux and ui but uh, we have uh, in under in ug we have graphic design okay uh, in okay but masters yeah we don't have any design related courses okay so yeah okay so can we uh, any questions if i have missed anywhere no no and if uh, you would have missed any question kiran we'll i'll keep asking you questions whatever queries come to me i would keep directing all my yes, questions if if you see any questions on facebook live so you can ask me here yeah probably you've almost answered all the queries and i would be posting the other queries as well to you uh mm-hmm. because we have already exceeded the time of the webinar so mm-hmm. i would love for you to uh, give us a parting note for the entire webinar please go ahead okay so yeah if we completed the questions okay i just want to thank you guys this is a really wonderful session and uh, i see there are a lot of participants okay so i look forward to receive applications from these students and before that if they have any further questions okay you, they can contact me via you and your team okay and uh, of course you will be i, I think uh, i'm i'm very confident you will be able to clear uh, their doubts in case if you, there are any questions which you cannot uh provide answers yes please feel free to contact me and i thank um uh what's it, tanush and you tanvi 
for uh, arranging this session and i know we are in a going through a difficult situation okay where we cannot meet uh, we cannot have one to one sessions okay in person okay so i believe these sessions will help students to know about the university and clear doubts uh, what they have related to the admission entry criteria scholarships and tuition fee okay and uh, if i mean if required i'm happy to do a few a few more sessions uh, in coming days okay so let's see and just keep in touch okay, if you need any assistance okay definitely thank you so much and to all thank my you, viewers yeah. to all my viewers we'll be keep we'll keep coming up with such informative webinars ahead as well so please stay connected with us thank you so much guys take care bye bye thank you thank you so much